Howdy folks. So recently the left click button in my uh, main mouse uh, failed. So the switch uh, would uh, exhibit bouncing and uh, it wouldn't it wouldn't stay um, actuated when you held the button down. So it made it became a giant nightmare to use. And uh, I wanted to repair this mouse rather than replace it because this is a Steel Series Sensei Pro and uh, it's probably a five or six year old mouse. They don't make it anymore and I don't think that there really is anything equivalent to it out there um, because this mouse actually had a screen in the bottom, it had a user interface that you could actually configure by just flipping the mouse over and um, it was it was nice because it saved all your settings into the mouse, you didn't need a PC or any software to deal with uh, to configure it, which was nice because of course I use Linux and most of the software is Windows only and I know that there's other mice that now have that um, but there's other reasons why I like it. Uh, you know, it was an expensive mouse and I wanted to fix it. And it's really not that hard uh, to fix uh, switches in mice. And uh, I wanted to just uh, show how I'm doing it and uh, give you a tour of what's inside this mouse in case uh, you're curious. Because there was a lot of marketing uh, BS around this particular mouse. I remember very vividly, and I'm sure I can find a screenshot or, or, or an image or something, um, of it, but I remember the marketing material for this mouse saying that it was more powerful than the Pentium processor. That was the thing that they were touting with this. And um, while it's technically true, uh, it was also, uh, you know, a big load of BS, uh, because of course that doesn't really mean anything. And so this is actually the main PCB out of it. Uh, it's just got an STM32 uh, F01, so it's just a little Cortex-M0 processor, which, you know, yes, technically, you know, it is more powerful, but then again, you know, you're talking about something quite old. And uh, so this thing is the main board, and uh, we've got the image sensor, just a little STM32, which has all of the, all of the, uh, probably using the internal E squared prom for the settings configuration, uh, configuration settings. Um, it's got a little LCD here, which is what shines through the bottom, um, and that's what uh, you can use uh, the user interface through. Uh, it's got some connectors for all the LEDs and other buttons, and it's got the three primary buttons, the left click and middle click, and then the scroll wheel um, encoder, and there's really nothing exciting on the bottom of it. Um, the mouse was exceptionally well built um, for, you know, for a mouse, because most mice are quite terrible inside. Um, and it was quite well thought out in the fact that everything has a connector, except for the power to the backlight of the LCD, which is just soldered on. And I've seen this kind of thing in so many, so many pieces of consumer electronics, where they do an excellent job in laying it out. Everything is connectorized. Everything is, you know, you know, screws in, plugs in, snaps in, whatever. And then there's always one thing that's just like, ah, fuck it. You know what? Just solder that. So I don't know if it's an afterthought. I mean, there's clearly enough room for it. And uh, like, it doesn't even make sense that, you know, maybe they use the same board on a model without a screen. Well, they populated the... Uh, the LCD connector, um, you know, like I don't see any, I don't see any reasons as to why you would you would populate this and not populate another connector. So it just looks like laziness is on on my part. But anyway, that's why these things are still connected together. I've yet to actually replace the switches. So that's the the main board. Um, it's got a connectorized USB cable. Um, the secondary board, which sits on top of it, this one has all of the side buttons and uh, you know the main LED. And uh, that's it. It's just a board with switches and an LED on it. It's got a couple other boards. It's got, you know, literally just an LED with some, um, I guess it's, I guess what's the right word for this? It's a, it's a, it's a type of like rubber or latex or something they put over it um, just to diffuse the light uh, because these are probably just surface mount LEDs. And then there's another one. They've done the exact same thing, which goes on the scroll wheel. And so this just sits inside the scroll wheel. Um, all that stuff is not terribly exciting. And of course, I've disassembled this because once it's apart, um, it's a great time to clean all the nooks and crannies and stuff that you can't clean when it's uh, all together. So the, the issue, of course, like I said, was the left click, which are these switches here. And uh, as with a lot of these mice, um, the three primary switches are different. Um, in this case, actually, now that I'm actually just looking at it, um, only the left and right click are um decent switches, I'll, I'll call it, I'll call it that. So you can see that the left and right click are these Omron switches, and you'll notice that the middle click, it says TTC on it, which is obviously not Omron, and if you look at the secondary board, which has got the other switches on it, um, for the, 
um, I, I'm really the you know the, the back forward page up down whatever you want to call them. Um, they're all configurable. These are all made by TTC. These are kind of like a no name switch. So really, they've cheaped out on the switches as much as possible, um, except for the left and right click. Now, if you look up the part number for the switch, it doesn't exist um, anymore. Uh, there's a couple people from China that claim they have it. I don't particularly want to find out if they actually do, nor do I really want to replace it with a switch that failed in six years. So I found what I believe is the, uh, the equivalent replacement of this um, that is available now, and it's called the D2FS series from Omron. And it has a 100,000 actuation mechanical life. And they also make a D2F series, so it's, it's without the S. Um, the S stands for shit. And if you buy the D2F series switches, um, they have 10 times the lifespan. So they have 1 million uh, mechanical actuations. And the electrical actuations are um, just an order of magnitude less than mechanical in pretty much every switch. So they are exactly the same. Um, Physically, they have exactly the same actuation force. Um, they're, they're basically identical to the original switches, but they have 10x the lifespan, and they're only 2x the cost. So um, since, you know, since these last about six years, these should last about 60 years, which basically means I'm never doing this again. So absolutely, the uh, extra dollar per switch is worth it. And of course, I didn't just order one switch. I ordered all three switches because I'm just going to replace all three of them. Um, I don't really want to have to come back in here. And the reason why is because most mice um, on the bottom, uh, the screws are hidden underneath the skates. And as is usually the case, if you, re if you try to remove the skates, most of the time um, you will mutilate them trying to get them off. Um, it depends on how good the adhesive is, uh, but in some cases they're stuck on so well uh, that you'll basically destroy the skate or, or mangle it in such a way that even when you put it back on, it's not really flat or it's got a bump somewhere and then it drags and rubs when you try to you know, move the mouse and it, it's just generally awful. And you can buy replacement skate kits for a lot of mice, but of course not this one because this was obviously not popular enough. Um, so what I did before I took, the, before I took it all off um, was I actually did the thing that we all did when we were in uh, school and I made rubbings of the actual um, skates. So just so that I had a perfect outline in the event that I needed it. And I actually managed to get these ones off without destroying them too much, which, uh, you know, they're a little bit bent, but they're actually in pretty decent shape, although they are quite worn. Um, so I got lucky, but I, I can't always guarantee that getting them off will, uh, will result in something as nice as this. Um, I ended up using a, a, a razor blade and a, um, like a spudging tool to, to, get in as about as an extreme angle as possible, um, and I did it very slowly. But I assumed that these would be uh, pretty much unusable, and I'm not going to put these back on because they are quite worn, and so I wanted to make my own skates. And you can buy uh, rolls of, of tape or sheets that you can cut your own skates out of, but they're very expensive because, um, you know, they're Teflon and all this other stuff. And there's actually a much cheaper way to do this, which is not branded as uh, skate material. So what I ended up picking up is this. This is a roll of UHMW. So this is um, ultra high molecular weight polyethylene. And uh, this stuff is, is actually quite cheap when you compare it with the equivalent um, Teflon or you know, Delarin or any other kind of material that is hard and slippery and relatively abrasion resistant. And uh, this tape, um, you can buy it um, on Amazon, so it's, you know, it's readily available, and it has adhesive on one side, so, so this has, a, there's a plastic film on this, you can't see it, but um, you can peel it off and stick it um, just like the original pads, so you don't even have to deal with the, uh, you know, any kind of adhesive, and, uh, it, you know, it, it's really cheap. I mean, this, this roll will probably last me an entire lifetime. Um, I could do, like, dozens and dozens, hundreds, maybe, mice of this. You only need a few inches of this um, for every mouse you do, and uh, I just put the old ones on, and I used a, a you know a very sharp, very sharp knife, and I cut out um, new skates. And obviously, you've you've seen them. Um, this is what they look like uh, as soon as you cut them, and their their edges are still not perfect. Um, that's actually the bottom side. That's the top side. And uh, so they're, yeah, they're not perfect. Um, but I can always sand or file the edges to sort of chamfer them so that they don't catch when you slide. And uh, the I'd have to where, I don't wonder where the 
I wonder where the other one went. But uh, the, the reason why this is also really nice is it happens to be the exact, uh, the exact width of, oh, that's why it, where, where it went. I never actually bothered to take it off. So yeah, so you can see these two are kind of stuck together because there's still a bit of glue residue on the other side. But it turned out that the, the width of this, of this skate is about exactly the width of the uh, tape, which in this case is about 0.75 inches. So um, yeah, this stuff's actually pretty great. And of course, you can use this for a bunch of other stuff. Like it's designed for, you know, putting on uh, runners for drawers and, and cabinets and, and not cabinets, but, uh, you know, anything, anything that slides basically uh, to make it, it uh, slide smoother. So this is definitely going to get used. So, uh, you know, even though it, it obviously was a, a decent, decent cost uh, with relation to this entire repair, um, it's going to get some life after this. So the switches were like, they were $2 each and uh, the shipping was, you know, like eight bucks. So I, at the end of the day, this, this whole thing is going to cost me about 20, 25 bucks to, to repair, which I think is perfectly fine for, uh, you know, a $150 mouse or so. So anyway, I'm going to just so desolder these, uh, these switches. It's super, super simple, just three contacts. So I'm not going to bother showing you that. I'll just show you, uh, once it's all back together and, uh, I'll put the skates on. I got to get some goo gone and remove all of this residue. Um, I would always recommend removing all the residue first because if you don't, you're going to end up with weird bumps and stuff and it's not going to wear evenly and it's going to kind of just suck. So that I have to do first and uh, I'll bring you back when I'm done. And here it is after the uh, replacement. So I've just soldered on all three of the new switches and uh, it's super easy. Just desolder them, pop the new ones in. What's kind of interesting is that on the silk screen underneath the uh, the switch that was to, from this TT TTC or whatever brand, um, it actually had a T on the board um, where they indicate the they indicate the direction of the plungers because of course these two are upside down compared to this one and it had a T uh, that was drawn in it. So I, I really wonder if from the very beginning uh, they were anticipating using those switches. Uh, it's kind of interesting to see. So I've got all that assembled. I've also used Goo Gone, so I've cleaned up these surfaces so they're about as clean as they're ever going to get. And of course the rest of it's all been washed. So it's now just a reassembly process and I get to see if my uh, homemade skates uh, really work as well as I hope they will. So I've got the, uh, the bottom half all reassembled and I've got the top half all reassembled and I just uh, went to go put this back together and I noticed something didn't feel right with the clicks um, uh, just as I was about to screw these two halves together. So I took another look at the switches and I am pretty sure that there is no way uh, you're going to see this on camera so you're probably going to have to take my word for it and especially doing this one-handed is going to be almost impossible. But the switches are not the same size. Exactly. They are about, the new ones are about, I'd say, one millimeter taller um, than on the, the previous switches. And yeah, I don't think there's any way I'm going to be able to show this to you um, in any, any, in, you know, in any, any reliable way. So the, the new switch is on the... Uh, is on the left and uh, they're not perfectly aligned but take my word for it it's about a millimeter of difference between the two and so that means the plungers a little bit higher and so of course um, that means that the the, uh, the little little plastic nub that presses down on the plunger um, is preloaded by this a little bit too much and so when you screw everything down um, all it takes is a feather light touch to actuate the switch even though the switch has the exact same actuation force um, it's just been preloaded by this this plastic. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go in with a file and I'm going to grind down these a little bit um, because I can still get these, you know, I can get the new switches and so I'm basically going to just permanently retrofit this mouse to accept the slightly taller, better switches um, than, you know, go any other route because uh, I don't think that there's any harm in doing that and uh, there's a decent amount of material on both of these that I can get rid of. So that's... Uh, the only setback I've had so far, and uh, it's just a, a minor thing that can be resolved with a bit of filing. I want to go back on what I said about the difference in size between these two switches. So I said it was about a millimeter, and I actually got my calipers out, and it's way less than that. It's actually like 0.1 of a millimeter. Um, it's, and it's not the case size. The actual plastic from the bottom to the top is exactly the same, and the plunger size is the same. The difference is where on the travel of the plunger 
uh, does it actuate. So the, the newer switches, they actuate at a much, they actuate much, um, much earlier in their travel than the others. Otherwise, all the other dimensions are exactly the same. And I suspect that that difference is due to the material that the, the internal, um, you know, spring contacts are made out of, um, because of course these are snap action switches, and so they've got like this. It's really fascinating the way this, uh, the the way that snap action switches work. They've got these little um, little bars that are like preloaded so that they, you know, they always snap, and you can never be in sort of a both states at once kind of a thing. Really, really quite neat. And I think that material is different for the the durability, and I think that's what results in just a very slight difference in actuation. Um, uh, point. So, um, like I said, I just took this apart and I shaved down these points with uh, just a file and you can see the remnants of it. Just a teeny tiny bit that I took off there and uh, I found it it so the, it was so minute it was really difficult to measure with calipers so I ended up just uh, filing off a bit and then test fitting it and I did that a couple times and I dialed it into exactly the way I want it and now it's um, well, it's like factory perfect, but better than factory perfect because I've tuned it the way I like it. So, um, yeah, so there was no actual problem there. And if, I guess if you had a problem like this and it was not actuating enough, you could uh, put something uh, on these to build them up and make them uh, bigger if you wanted. Um, so I guess there's, there's, there's always a way to, uh, to rectify that height issue. Uh, as long as the case, um, which acts like a bump stop, as long as the case is the right height, um, then you shouldn't have any any issues. And lastly, here it is, all back together with the new skates applied. So uh, as you can see, the uh, the actual UHMW is clear. The blue is just the uh, uh, covering film for the adhesive. So it actually doesn't look nearly as weird as you may have thought. And you can actually even see the screw holes. Uh, but I can say that it works perfectly. Everything functions. It glides nicely. Um, I did end up using the same file um, to just chamfer the edges of these and that helped um, a lot. It doesn't catch or anything, which is pretty nice. It's actually better than the, I used to have a Mad Cat's um, Rat 7, and it, it scraped like mad on the, the default skates, uh, the ones it came with, so <laughs> I managed to make better ones than, than it had. So uh, I honestly, I still have that mouse, so I may actually fix it using this same stuff since I have a whole roll of it. Um, if I was to do this again, I would definitely cut them a little bit undersized. Um, my uh, my uh, tolerances are not nearly as good as the factory, and so it would uh, be a lot easier to get this on if it was just a little bit undersized. And um, I don't think it would really drastically change anything uh, having a little bit less surface area. But anyway, um, there you go. So uh, that's uh, that's my adventure changing the switches in my uh, in my mouse. So I will enjoy another theoretically 60 years before I uh, decide to <laughs> upgrade. So anyway. Um, that's all for today, so as always, thanks for watching.